Welcome listeners to the Love Your Story podcast. Today's episode is a part of a series where I'm introducing you in more detail to each of the challenges in my book, Life, Living Intentional and Fearless Every Day, The 21 Life Connection Challenges. So since this is our fourth challenge that we're looking at, if you're a regular listener, you're already on top of what we're doing here. But let me just recap real quickly where we've been. In episode 89, I went into some wonderful detail about the process of doing random acts of kindness, which is challenge number one. And we did some boots on the ground recording on the random act of kindness night and what that looked like and what popped up for those that were doing the acts of kindness and what feelings and thoughts and insecurities and stuff came up while trying to do that. So that's a fun live interview boots on the ground. That was episode 89. So episode 164, I went into detail with Ashley Stewart, this fabulous declutter expert. And we talked about why challenge number two, which is to get rid of one thing you no longer need, is so much more important than just this simple act seems on the surface. In episode 170, I tackled an in-depth on challenge number three, and that was where we looked at what it really means and looks like to find the lesson in something that doesn't go your way. Again, great stuff with expert Leslie Householder on finding the gratitude and the lesson in our trials or disappointments. This series of episodes is specifically to delve into why these challenges were included in the book in the first place by getting into more detail about what they are, having experts weigh in on the ideas, and then showing some real life examples of what it looks like when they're implemented. So today, stay tuned because we are exploring challenge number four, and it's a thing I call success file. Stories are our lives in language. Welcome to the Love Your Story podcast. I'm Lori Lee, and I'm excited for our future together of telling stories, evaluating our own stories, and lifting ourselves and others to greater places because of our control over our stories. This podcast is about empowerment and giving you, the listener, ideas to work with in making your stories work for you. Story power serves you best when you know how to use it. Let's jump right in. What is challenge number four? Challenge number four is, at the end of the day, as you are lying in bed, you make a mental list of all of the things that you accomplished that day. Now stick with me here, I know that seems a little easy, but some of the best things really are. This is one of my favorite challenges. I call it success file, which is a play on word, successful, success file. And it's one of my favorites because I love doing it because it makes me happy and because I get a great deal of satisfaction reliving, even just for a moment, the spaces in which I spent my time. Now, the way this works is at the end of the day, you list either in your head or on paper, everything that you got done that day and you get to count everything, all the little things. This switches things up because the natural tendency is to consider and mull over everything that we need to get done and to stress about it as we're falling asleep and to think about what we didn't get done. And that's not a great place to fall asleep from. This makes it so our minds can't slow down, which means it takes longer to go to sleep. And then the sleep isn't as good because your subconscious is concerned with all you still need to do because that's what you fell asleep thinking about. With success filing, you lay in bed, count everything you did that day. So like I got up, Yay! Sometimes that's a really big deal. I got out of bed. Yay! I had a shower. I did my hair. I did my makeup. Nice job, Lori. I ate something healthy. I made sure the kids had breakfast. I got the kids to school. I did dishes. Now my kids are grown up, so I'm just throwing out examples here. But, you know, I had a good talk with a friend. I got to work on time. I had my favorite cup of chai tea. Whatever it is, you just go through and you recount all of the wonderful things that you did and got accomplished. You get the idea. But let's move on and talk about why. One way that we drive ourselves to overwhelm and distress and to anxiety is by harboring a constant focus on what we have not yet accomplished. And I am one of the best at doing this. Maybe it's why I love this challenge so much because 
I'm always focused on accomplishing things. And you know, once you get something done, you're looking forward to the next thing. And because of that, we don't celebrate all of the things we accomplish enough. There will always be more to do. We know that. Let's get that out of the way right now. Even when we're dead, there's still going to be more that we could do or more that could have been done. But I think what matters more is that we've already done things and checking in if we have enjoyed that journey. Now, I know that enjoy the journey is a cliche, but it's a cliche because it's used often and it is used often because it has real meaning. If we take time to celebrate our wins, the small ones, as well as the large accomplishments, we improve our self-esteem and we lower our stress and we get a moment of attention, satisfaction and reconsideration about things that otherwise get pushed under the rug of time, lost to the pace of modern living. When I lay in bed and do this, I feel wonderful. I count everything I did that day and I almost feel a sigh of relief in my soul. It's a mini celebration that makes me feel accomplished and gives me time to think over and reminisce about the good and the things that are now off my list. And, you know, that makes me feel strong. And if there are a few things that went awry, I get to consider what I might have done differently. And I get to shift quietly in that space, but mostly I'm focused on what are the things I got done. I think the bottom line for doing this is simple. And we do it because it makes us happier. It improves our sleep. It decreases our stress and it improves our mood. And why not do it? Because it's really very easy. So why do we need a tool like this in the first place? We are programmed evolutionarily to focus on what is wrong so that we can protect ourselves from pain and attack. It's called a negativity bias. That's why we can remember the emotional disappointments or traumas in our past so much easier than we can remember all the good things that happened to us. It's so that we can remember what hurt us and we can stay away from it. Well, the bummer side of the survival mechanism is that it creates a lot of unhappiness in our lives because our thoughts naturally swirl around the pain and the undone and what's not right. And then our thoughts create our reality. And thus, we end up having to actively manage our thoughts in order to create joyful living on purpose. This involves monitoring the stories that we are telling ourselves about ourselves and about our lives and about the people and the things that are going on around us. Well, this brings me to challenge number four. Challenge number four is one of the techniques for managing the stories that you're telling yourself about your journey. The reason these challenges have been put in the book, each and every one of them, is specific. It's not just a bunch of, hey, go, go and do this and go and do that and see what happens. They're chosen because there is much deeper meaning and purpose behind them. And the book itself, The 21 Challenges, are a taster's table of life hacks. And you get to try them all. And, you know, maybe you're already doing some of them, which is ideal if they are part of the way that you function. But there will be ones that aren't. And if you're not doing it, try it. Because as we've discussed in each of these episodes that does the deep dive into the challenges, you see that there's a lot more. It's like it's like a glacier where there's a little bit on the surface and it might seem easy or not really into that, whatever. But when you do it, there's that whole, the biggest part of the glacier is underneath the water where there's a lot more meaning and purpose and strength in doing and incorporating these things. So with this one, it is a technique for managing the stories and for increasing the joy in your journey. When we take a few minutes just to acknowledge our own daily progress, to focus on what we did instead of what we didn't do. When we celebrate our successes, large and small, and we become our own best cheerleader, then we shift our energy and our reality and our journeys. So it's by small and simple things are great things brought to pass and successfulling is one of those small things. Bam! That is why this becomes a really gorgeous tool. Now, let's get a little outside thought on the topic. Rescue Time blog says, 
quote, when Harvard's Teresa Amabile looked into the daily habits of hundreds of knowledge workers across industries, she found that out of all of the things that can boost our mood and motivation during the workday, the single most important is making progress on meaningful work, unquote. Just like we love crossing small things off our list of things to do, being able to see that we're even one step closer to a big goal is a huge motivator. The problem is that these small wins are notoriously hard to measure, and worse, we tend to ignore them. So Success File changes that. As author Jocelyn Kegley notes, quote, most of us make advances small and large every single day, but we fail to notice them because we lack a method for acknowledging our progress. This is a huge loss. There's a reason we're busier than ever, but feel like nothing gets done. When all you see is a huge goal looming in front of you, it's easy to get depressed and to feel defeated." Unquote. Well, in response to Jocelyn's comment that we lack a method for acknowledging our progress, now you no longer lack a method. It's called Success File. Let's talk a little data now. In a study conducted to determine how the normal life inside organizations influence performance, researchers had 238 employees across seven companies keep a daily diary. After looking over 12,000 diary entries, they found that capturing small wins every day is what keeps us motivated. To increase self-confidence, motivation, and future success, all we need to do is record the small wins. Why does this work? Well, when we acknowledge that we accomplished something, our reward center is activated and we feel a sense of pride. Specifically, the neurochemical dopamine is released and we feel happy and energized and hopeful. It's why we seek accomplishment in the first place. We are hooked on the feeling. By acknowledging the wins daily, we keep happy and we keep motivated and we keep positive. Challenge number four is based on research, on data, on personal experience. Filing your success is a part of the 21 challenges for a very important reason. And I will end with that. That's it for today. Your challenge, of course, is to go to sleep tonight counting your accomplishments. No sheep, just accomplishments. And it will only take one day of doing this to realize how good it feels. And you'll be hooked. Let's hear it for less stress, better sleep, and the joy of celebrating all that you do. The tools are here for better living. If you'd like your copy of the 21 Challenges, your own book with places to record your experiences, it's yours. Easy to find on Amazon. It's called Life, Living Intentional and Fearless Every Day, the 21 Life Connection Challenges. And just search my name, Lori Lee, and the word life in capital letters, and it comes right up. You can also go to the loveyourstorypodcast.com, and there's a link there that will take you right to Amazon. The book has all the amazing challenges. And if you're looking for a program or a format for helping you to create more connection, more possibility, or self-care in your life, I highly recommend it. It's also great for families to do together, go out into the day and take the challenge each individually, do it, and then come back and talk about it. Um, there have also been groups that are doing it, either online virtually or um, together. Also, on the website, use that to access any past episodes of the podcast. You can copy and share those links easily, and you can listen to any of the past episodes that we have done in depth on these challenges. And I'll see you in two weeks for our next fabulous episode. Have fun success filing. Mm -hmm.